You found Striker of Enyo, and this is infinite resources for Metal Gear Solid 5 uh, after patch, uh, which is essentially part two. So what Konami did is about uh, six months ago, as from the publishing of this video, uh, probably about three months or so after the game came out, they changed the values so that uh, when you picked up a shipping container uh, too quickly after picking it up again, uh, they basically gave it to you for two decimal points less. So 7,500 units became 75, uh, 500, like, precious became five. And, uh, so, yeah, we, we needed to change a few things up. And you might be wondering, well, well, why do this? I mean, the people that got a lot of money don't really care. Have you seen some of the, uh, the gold weapons and stuff? Uh, you know, this stuff asks for a lot of metal, a lot of minor metal, a lot of the biological and stuff, and you're talking about, you know, millions of GMP to get this stuff, so you still need to be able to farm resources, uh, but we're going to go past uh, the restrictions that they did. But yeah, Konami put out a restriction, and I figured it out, it's actually one hour. Uh, one hour from the point when you uh, get the items, uh, you have to wait that length of time before you can get the full value of it again. You can repeat the mission as often as you want and keep picking up those shipping containers, but you're going to get it at two decimal points less. Uh, about. And uh, and those that's not worth it. I mean, 75 resources a piece, you might as well grab one of the little boxes. So, so yeah, we're going to go through the three main missions that I like to do when I'm doing this, and I'll show you how to reset it. Really? Explosions? Isn't that cliche for YouTube? Okay, number 12 is Hellbound. Uh, this is up first. You probably saw it coming. I mean, you know, it's it's precious metal. I mean, we're gonna get it. You don't need to get too fancy. Um, I don't know if you're really that worried about your costs. The sneaking suit, uh, I always like picking it because it's a very low cost. And it also has the muffled footsteps. You want to have one that has that. There's a number of suits that have the muffled footsteps. Uh, but these, uh, this particular sneaking suit from uh, the previous Metal Gear Solid uh, game uh, works the best because it's, it's like, what, only 500 GMP or something? And the other ones cost a couple thousand. Not that it's a really big, huge deal, but uh, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And we're also going to pick this one during the day because uh, we want to keep down the uh, adaptive difficulty as much as possible. If we're always picking night, then by the time you complete this thing, uh, your little night uh, indicator is going to be in the red big time. So we're going to do about half of these during the day, and that helps you guys see what's going on. Uh, well, with this mission, it doesn't really matter. But uh, the other two missions we're going to do, are we're going to have to do them at night. Or I should say, well, the one I'm cutting out uh, isn't going to be. Normally, I do uh, mission 18 after this blood runs deep, but uh, that's that's eight uh, like 8200. Uh, Was it biological? I think no, it's it's a uh, common metal. But we kind of make up for that when we do mission 30 for Skullface. So all you got to do is just take out these two guys. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, always scan them. Uh, just to see if they might happen to be uh, decent stats. They, they a lot of the time are, so you're going to get a lot of uh, A++ and occasionally an S here and there. So it always helps to might as well grab them. I mean, when you're doing this 10 to 20 times, why not? You know, then you'll have another 40, 40 people that have an S rank, perhaps. So we're going to grab these like before. Uh, that's going to give us 500? And then uh, these other two crates, that's going to give us 7,500 for that. And 4,000 for that. So and we're just going to jump down and we go over to the document. And that's going to create the checkpoint for us. And then we're going to see the materials. Uh, you can also skip this by hitting the back button or the select button. Fix on the and wait for the materials to pop up, and there we go, there's our stuff. So you just abort back to the ACC. Uh, mission 21, uh, the war economy. Please select a mission. This is the other main one, but yeah, we are always going to abort to the ACC. You never want to finish the mission. If you finish the mission, 
then you're going to have to complete four main missions uh, before the shipping containers are going to show back up on the map. And uh, you don't want to ever do this. Uh, what am I picking? I think I give myself a shotgun isn't bad. If you run across a dude, you can put a, a guy down pretty fast with a shotgun. Um, you can take some C4. I've got the silenced uh, 50 cal uh, sniper rifle. Uh, there's one thing that we need to do uh, if you don't have this, the silenced sniper rifle. It's easier if you have that, but uh, you just need the TNT. I mean the the C4, and you'll be okay. We got to blow open one fence. Because that's literally the only way out of a certain area. But uh, but yeah, the war economy, you've seen this before, and nothing's really going to change. Um, but again, now we're actually having to do the whole thing in one go. Before I made a long version that showed you this, but I basically recommended, oh, just grab those you know few shipping containers right in the front, and then run back to the... Uh, run back to the starting point and you know it'll save and then there you go and then just keep repeating that but now we got to change things up a little bit so now we got to you know basically create uh farming runs for ourselves you know before we we do the repeatable mission that basically resets everything so that the values can maintain the same so this is well, I mean, it's it's the war economy. I told you, Jesus, it's marked on your map. So we're going there first. Uh, we're going to go around the back side, uh, around the outside, around the outside. Uh, the other containers we want are right there, and the last bit of containers are going to be inside. Then we're going to go out one of those fences. Uh, surprisingly enough, when you're back there on the airport, a uh, snake cannot climb out anywhere. You can't shoot the locks off. All you can do is either use an explosive to get out, or uh, in my case, I use the silenced uh, sniper rifle, but it has to be the 50 cal, because that'll actually blow it open. But, uh... And I've talked before about the whole honeycomb of the uh, save points, the checkpoints uh, in the map. You, it's basically like putting a... Let's say you were to draw a circle around every base and outpost, and uh, all those little circles would end up connecting, right? Kind of honeycombed throughout the, the missions. Uh, there's gonna, always going to be landmines there. Um, and that's basically what, we're, what we do. Um, it's, it's an ingenious way of doing it, because it allows the game to always save before you go taking on an outpost, and it always saves after you just finished one, uh, essentially. And that's what we're taking advantage of. Uh, but like I said, I will let you know when that comes. We're going to grab those two. War economy. This is going to give us 9,000 of the uh, the fire. It's going to give us 1575 of biological. Uh, 2250 of common metal. And then we're going to get 1500 precious metal. All on this one map. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good for one trick. Um, I'm not speeding up the footage. My snake actually has a, uh, what is it, mobility three on his arm. So this section you might actually, in, you, know, you might be encountering the helicopter like right here. Uh, you, you need to get down. The helicopter will see you. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I'm traveling a bit faster than normal. I'm not using the cyborg suit. I do have it, but... Uh, I don't like using stuff that other players might not have available to them. Uh, that's why I brought the C4 with anyway. Uh, just because I like my silence 50 cal, you guys might not have it yet. Try to stay away from the fence about 20 meters or so. Because if you get too close to it, the one guy I'm going to look at, that guy right there, he will hear the footsteps and he'll come running over. Typically, that guy's about 50 or 40 meters away from the fence when I get here. So you'll, you'll learn these little tricks about, like, the, the patterns and whatnot. And then we're going to have to cut here in just a few seconds uh, because my maximum record time is about five minutes. Look at that. That's that's nearly seamless, right? If, it, if she wasn't talking, you probably would have never noticed. Okay, so we're going to grab these three. You want to be careful of the guys in the tower because one guy ends up looking this way. Uh, sometimes so sometimes you might see the shipping container actually taking off 
Like, yeah, him right up there. Sometimes he looks this way. Now, if you're doing it the same exact way every time, uh, like, see, now he's looking over this way. If you do, if you get yourself into a pattern and you time everything out pretty good, then you're, you'll automatically be missing the vision sights of some of these guys. But uh, if you are off on your timing, there's a jeep also that comes down this road, but I usually end up getting out of here before he comes. Otherwise, he actually ends up pulling up uh, right in... F there he is. That's the, the jeep. I should have never looked at it because now the helicopter is going to find me. But that jeep actually goes through the front gate, and then it, uh, it actually pulls around behind the shipping container. So he's actually the guy that is going to notice the shipping containers are gone. It's not really worth it to be trying to grab walkers and jeeps. I mean, come on, the jeeps are what t worth t uh, ten thousand GMP. Uh, some of the the utility trucks, the deuce and a half, they're like twenty. Uh, it's not worth trying to grab all these little things. Um, yeah, this this slowed my run down a little bit, but it, it's not bad. I've seen some guys that use the stealth camouflage, uh, but I'm assuming that a lot of you might not have it at this point in the game, so I'm not going to use it. But quite honestly, the stealth camouflage level six, it's not a bad thing to carry around. Uh, I think it costs what maybe four thousand GMP, so it's it's it actually costs less. To carry that with you than the sniper rifle. The sniper rifle I have is like 7,000. But I need that to, you know, blow it open. Um, and like I said, these these numbers don't necessarily mean much uh, when you're later in the game or when you've completed the game. Uh, for these, though, you need the Fulton Wormhole. Um, th there's not much I can say besides you need to finish Mission 31. Uh, that's the, uh, the first part of the game's ending. And then you'll have, like, a side op mission 50 you gotta go and do. And then you'll all of a sudden have the Wormhole Fulton. Uh, there's, there's really nothing special to it. Uh, there's no, you know, cutscene that explains how Emmerich is able to bend space and time in order to create these wormholes. Uh, it's just given to you, so I'm not really spoiling anything. If anything, you've seen that, uh, you know, there's a way to do it. So this is where you put your C4. You would put your C4 right here and blow open the gate. But... <laughs> I, I know, I, I petted the dog later to, to make up for it. But with the sniper rifle, then the helicopter does not get aware of it. Make sure the helicopter is not there, uh, or not too close, because the C4 will actually immediately alert him if he's just, you know, a matter of like 100 meters behind you or so. Or like 150. So the honeycomb save point is right up here. Uh, it's always here. There we go. There's our checkpoint. And now we automatically have all that stuff. All that stuff is ours now. It's, it's going to give you the, the processing thing as well, but now no matter what you do, that stuff is going to be yours. It's in your mother base. It's there. Um, you can lose power, throw your system out the window. You have it. See, there's all our stuff. That's a lot of stuff. And now we are just going to abort to the ACC. We don't want to complete the mission. We don't want to collect $200. And Skullface. Skullface mission 30 is the big one. This is this one that normally I never would recommend, but simply because of the hour time limit and whatnot. Um, you know, if you're doing a run of the other two, you know, back to back, mission 12, Hellbound, uh, mission 18, Blood Ruds Deep, you know, to get some of your common metal, and you're doing mission 21, uh, yeah, you, you might want to do this. So, as you can see, you know, doing uh, the higher level tranquilizer rifles, those can cost you, like, nearly twice as much. Uh, if you downgrade your tra tranquilizer rifle uh, weapon a little bit, you can save yourself, like, 4,000 GMP. Uh, that's only if it, if it concerns you. Uh, I take the sniper rifle with me, uh, just in case. I always make sure I can do a sneaking thing. The big thing that's going to make this thing easy, though, is that we're going to use bombardments. Uh, we're going to use the uh, the sleeping gas drop. And we're also going to use the bombardment to kill them. And uh, so those cost 72,000 GMP each, I believe. 
Uh, by this point, you should have it built up a little bit. The resources you're going to get from this alone are, are purely worth it, because you're going to get a thousand precious metal. Uh, a guaranteed. Well, that's that's if you get all the way to the back. So here we go. This is... That's where we're going to go first and grab those materials. Once we go through the gate, it's going to autosave. Uh, well, whenever you go through these gates, they autosave, uh, which is kind of nice. There's like three points. The second group of containers is going to be right about here. It's going to autosave right there at that gate. And the other set is going to be here. Now, there's another set that's going to be inside even more, but we'll point those out as we get there. Um, I also can recommend using the active camouflage if you have it. I'm not going to use it here at first, just simply because I I'm, I'm trying to do this as if, you know, you, the player that doesn't have the experience, uh, doesn't know what he's doing. And you can always grab this container here. It's not much, it's 50 precious metal. But yeah, I don't like the videos where people are using like the cyborg suit and the and the skull uh, parasite suit, and it's like, well, I don't have access to those to make it easier on me, dudes. I mean, come on. Uh, I do have the speed up thing though. See, there's 7,500 of that. There's 4,000 of that. That first one alone is gonna give you, I believe it's a uh, precious 50, a uh, minor metal of 4,000, and biological of 7,500. So that kind of makes up for the biological that we don't get uh, somewhere else. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the minor that we don't. That's, no, that's common metal. Never mind. I was thinking of Blood Runs Deep, but that's actually the common metal that we don't get there. We miss out on that one for 8,000. But, like I said, um, doing this mission is going to give us quite a bit of stuff. And there, you know, we already hit the checkpoint there. The checkpoint isn't too far in. Uh, there we go. That's what we're saving so far. Start by making contact with him. And uh, I'm literally just a few, a few feet forward from where we last were. I'm just gonna kind of show you the route I take. You can take this back route. If you have the stealth camo, you can literally just run past everybody. Um, it really is that good. It has a long duration. And all you have to do is hide for a little while and it'll come back up. But literally, um, you know, I can run around uh, circles on that last part and have enough. Uh, you'll, you'll see. Um, but I always sneak around the left side here. Um, it's, it's purely advantageous to do that. But this is if you don't have stealth camo. This mission was a beast before, I believe I still have an E ranking. Now I could easily do it, you know, I could just stealth camo all the way straight there. Uh, I just haven't done it yet. Oh no, I, I'm sorry, you can't use the stealth camo, that restricts you to an A ranking. But I could do it, I've done it enough times now. Uh, so yeah, the things we have to do in order to uh, get our resources. I can't believe it was only an hour. I thought it was going to be 24 hours at first. Uh, and then I realized that, oh, I actually did it about two hours apart. And then I I just went with an hour time restriction. And sure enough, uh, that's all it was. They just didn't want you repeating it, you know, like that. But you can do it. If you got 10 hours in the day, you know, you could wait. But then I found out a way to reset it. So you see, it's, it saves up here, too. So you get a checkpoint right up here, uh, even if you screw up. The crates that we are going for, of course, are over here. They, they are only the white ones. Uh, the white ones have a value of uh, 100 times the units that are inside. The red ones are the ones that have, uh, I believe it's 400 times the units inside. That's why the red containers are always worth around either 4,000 to 7,500, depending on the materials. And, uh... And the white ones are about 450 to maybe 750 at most. So just by the color of it, you can tell, like, well, the most we're going to get is 750 from those. But there's like four of them over there. So, you know, that's actually going to give us... It's actually 750 for the fire and the common metal. So 
you know, we'll end up getting 15,000 of both of those uh, just by grabbing these here. Please select a strike point. Okay, so this is bombardment thing. I usually do the sleeping gas, like around the middle here. I knock some of them out, uh, get them sleeping, uh, and try to make other people come on in in order to investigate. Uh, as you can see, it's not too bad. Um, you know, I'm taking care of those guys with that. Now we're gonna grab these. Uh, oh, that was a dark red, I'm sorry. Was it? Uh, it's, it's hard to tell at nighttime on this. I'm looking at a very tiny screen, you know, as I'm previewing this. So we're gonna grab all these. Actually, I'm wrong. It's the that's the third part. This is not the 15,000 fire and common metal. Sorry about that. This is this is separate. The next section is gonna be that, and then after that is 4,000 minor and 1,000 precious. But there's actually, as if you looked at the uh, the tasks, there's actually seven red containers in this area, uh, in the base itself. Uh, that's not counting the ones that we found outside the base. And now we're just gonna straight up murder them. Uh, and this is going to kill off a lot of the resources. Uh, like I said, if you have stealth camo, you can literally just run past all these guys in the beginning, grab your containers, and move on. <laughs> just... But seriously, since we're not worried about uh, saving anything or uh, maintaining a S ranking, uh, we do it this way, just simply to make it easier on ourselves. And here we go. This guy is always going to be here. Uh, no matter how many you kill, he will stay at his post. He is very diligent. Uh, we're going to let him live. Always watch the helicopter. The helicopter oftentimes will go toward the player, even when the player isn't spotted in any way. Okay, so now we're going to use the stealth camouflage. And we're going to show you just how much easier. Otherwise, you would go to the left. You'd cut across the road here go left, go up, uh, it would save up there, and then you would move on. Like I said, every one of these uh, doorways, every one of these archways is a save point, so it's going to save as soon as we go through this, and it's going to save once we go in there. Those are the other two locations that we're going to grab stuff. Those are the other shipping containers. Yeah, I know, it's pretty far in there, and there's a lot of dudes. Normally you would bombard the crap out of it ahead of time, uh, but we don't need to do that, so... Oh, there's also a couple of tanks. Uh, I, I almost ran out there, not realizing what the frig I was doing. So here we go. Now it's just a matter of, okay, figuring out where the hell it is. And there we go. Extraction. Uh, you literally can grab stuff right next to a, an enemy and they won't spot you for the most part. You're in the enemy's headquarters. This is the, uh, the 7500. Yeah, for each one of these, and that's going to give us 15,000 of the fire and 15,000 for uh, common metal. Uh, that's that's pretty huge. You know, imagine doing this thing twice. Okay, I'm just, I don't know what the hell I'm doing now. Pretty much just run back. Okay, you can grab the tanks. I forgot the other tank, but the other section... There's one task for grabbing three tanks. That was one, this is two, and the other one was down by those other white containers. But here we go, we got three more red containers up here. So this is, you know, nearly a, uh, a field day when it comes to materials. That's gonna give us 500 precious. That's also gonna be uh, 500 precious. And this is gonna be the common. Or no, I'm sorry, the minor metal. This is gonna be 4,000. And there we go. That's what we came to get. Uh, it's that easy with the stealth camo. If you can get it, get it. There's an archway. That means it's going to save for us. Extraction. And there we go. You don't have to go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, each archway will save it. It means we can't see the total for the entire mission, but hey, uh, there's your materials. 
Okay, and then this is the mission to do to reset everything. We are do re uh, we are doing mission four, CW two. Give yourself the rocket launcher. Uh, I like to use it. You can do it with the minigun just fine, uh, but you want to pick the drop off point that is actually right on top of the objective. So. So yeah, uh, in order to reset the values of all the shipping containers uh, in the world, you can either wait an hour uh, in real time, uh, and that's with the, your system on, or whether uh, the game is actually even stopped uh, and you exited out of the game. So either way, uh, an hour real time, or complete a story mission. Uh, if you complete a story mission, then everything resets and all the values are back to the, the way it was. Now, if you're doing, you know, mission 30 as it is, uh, Skullface is going to take you a little bit of time. Uh, you know, you're you're looking at nearly a half hour of, of farming all this stuff in the first place, right? Because uh, that's what my footage is coming out to be anyway. So, and doing this more than twice a day, I think, would almost be insane. But, uh, but yeah, we're actually heading right there. We are looking for those three radar dishes. Uh, that's what we need to take out. The missile, uh, this locks on to people, uh, not the radar dishes, so have an idea where those radar dishes are, that will help you out, but sincerely all we need to do is just, once you take those three out, then you're done. If you know where they're at, uh, you can take them out, like I know that one's right there, but I kind of miss it. So there's one of the dishes right there. I'm using the missile launcher, you can use the minigun as well. Alright, there's the second one. And I know the third one is over... I think it's it's up to the left. I just missed my opportunity to grab it. Uh, the chopper will turn around like this and then he'll give you a long shot. But this is gonna do it for us. Uh, all you gotta do is take out that third... the third radar dish and, and it's back there. Uh, you're gonna see exactly where it is uh, once I fire at it. And that's going to do it for you. This is the updated version. I doubt Konami's going to do any other changes after this. You can see it right there. There's the dish right there. Clear as day now. And there you go. Now all your values are reset, and you can basically do all these areas all over again. Thanks for watching.